Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Jay with Anointed Radio, and we're going to start off in normal fashion where we're coming out of a scripture and then go into prayer. And the scripture we're coming out of is Philippians 4 and 6, and it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That means in those times that you feel like you don't know what to do, just give it to God. Don't stress about something you can't control. God had made the plan for you. All you got to do is just be faithful. All you got to do is just trust him and give him your problems. Give him your marriage. Give him your kids. Give him your financial situation. Give him your things that you stress about that that take away your sleep. Amen. Amen. Dear Father God, we just thank you, God. God, we come to you right now. We come to you right now and ask you just to be in the midst of, of this show tonight, God. God, be in the midst. Let, let some breakthroughs come through, some revelations. God, bless people under the sound of my voice to be able to be touched where somebody can say, what can I do? to be saved. Enlarge the territory of anointed radio where we could be able to, to go far and fro, to be able to, to go and touch people even with the hardest hearts, to be even teach some people that was unteachable, reach the unreachable. God, we just ask you to just be able to touch everybody that's listening, God, that they'll have a breakthrough, God, that they'll have some type of overflow. So when they they listen to us tonight, God, that they could get something from it and take it and be able to have a change in their life. God, we thank you. We glorify you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. We said that all in Jesus name. Amen. 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 This is Pastor Jay. And like always, I got something to say. You can follow me at Anointed Jaylon on Instagram and on Twitter. You could follow me on Facebook at Jay Calhoun. Um, you could follow me on Clubhouse at Jay Calhoun as well. And you could go see my singles, Wake Up Blessed, um, Renew My Praise, where the music video just dropped. We're at 120K. Woo! Good milestone. So definitely go check out Renew My Praise music video on YouTube. And you can check out Jesus, You Make Me Happy, all my latest singles. I have some great projects that's about to come out soon. So stay posted because we have a lot of things coming up. Another thing is make sure you go check out Dr. Marvin Netta Clay in her absence. She's teaching Bible study tonight at God's house. So definitely check her out and make sure you Follow her at Clay Marvinetta on social media or just go to her website at drmarvinettaclay.com and see her um, apparel, worship, uh, Lord knows, um, and worship forever. You will see a whole lot of things that she's doing, projects. She got some new music coming out soon. Definitely stay tuned for, to see what she's doing. Um, another person is check out Chris Johnson out of Chi-Town. So um, Chris Johnson, you can follow him on all social media platforms at SingChrisJ or go to SingChrisJ.com. Be able to follow all of his projects that he's doing. And you can check out Chiquita Andrews, um, our book author here at Anointed Radio for Train to be Broken but Unbroken. And um, DW, who is on a sabbatical, he's on a sabbatical for a few weeks from the DW experience. And um, we had Chris Johnson just jump into the room. Welcome to the stage, Chris Johnson. Hey, y'all. Sorry, I am traveling. <laughs> well, at least you're coming I'm from like church. Yeah. Amen. So we have, we have, um, DW, make sure you check out DW with the DW experience. Um, you could go to our podcast as to all his previous shows and um, be able to go to his social media to check all the projects he's doing. But we have today, we have an anointed singer here on Anointed Radio, Mr. Sean Bigby. Everybody, Mr. Sean Bigby. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I hope y'all are well. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Um, one thing we wanted to um, just bring on you and just say thank you for coming on on Anointed Radio. It's a blessing to have you here because you could have been anywhere else on the East Coast, especially because it is late and you here with us on the West Coast at Anointed Radio. So we just wanted to go ahead and say thank you. 
listen, I promise you, it is an honor and a privilege to be on with you guys. People don't have to call you. People don't have to uh, put you on their platform. So I'm appreciative for y'all doing that. I really am. Amen. So um, one thing I want everybody to do, if you're if you haven't done it already, make sure you share, like and subscribe um, to Anointed Radio as we're going to have this great show tonight. We're going to be talking about music. We're going to talk about writing. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of projects that uh, Mr. Sean is doing. And he is he is seasoned. Amen. <laughs> so he has some wisdom to be able to um, give to the upcomings because a lot of independent artists and upcoming artists, if you want to know how to move in the industry, you have to listen to the people that's done it. The people that have gone forth before you and actually um, succeeded in things. So we're going to be asking him some questions. We're going to listen to some of his music, but we have to start off in normal fashion and to just kind of give you some current events. Current events is here in Las Vegas. A lot of things are opening up. And there's a lot of people that's getting vaccinated. Make sure you stay safe here in Las Vegas while everybody might be going to, you know, all these places that's opening up, but cases have not gone away. So with that being said, be safe, be careful, wear your mask. They said until 70% of the United States is um, vaccinated, the mask is going to be there. I know you might be in a state that they have no mask, but guess what? COVID has not gone nowhere. So be careful. Your health is your wealth. So with that being said, make sure you take care of yourself. Another thing is um, make sure that in the, in this day, because the market, I'm, I'm just led to say this because somebody obviously need to hear this. Um, the market has changed for, you, for the home market, as I could say. So I want you to know that this is the season you could buy a house. This is the season for you to get your stuff together. Because you never know what the future brings. So be able to start securing your future, get you your home. I know some people out there are tired of renting. I know some people out there are tired of this the same old, same old. Inflation happens. That means rent go up. Get yourself financially secure where you can own a home. And make sure you don't have to worry about increases in rent, increases in this, increases in that, where you could be able to have a stability for your home, your family. So if you don't know, reach out to somebody. If your credit's not right, I may give you a secret. This is free game right now. Go and call everybody on your credit report and solve it. That's how easy. You didn't have to pay me. You didn't have to have nobody write you no letters. All you got to do is go pay these people that you promised that you said you was going to pay. And once that get off your credit, your credit goes up and it opens doors. Credit is so important in your older older age. I, I yep. wish I knew this. I, I thought credit was a visible credit card that I could just get whatever I want without no cash. But it lasts a, almost a lifetime, almost a decade it took for me to get my stuff right because I finally got to a point where I knew I needed to get my stuff together. So I want everybody that's listening, make sure you get your financials in order, especially as Christians, faithful stewards, right? You got to be a, a, a good steward over your money. That means you have to be able to do what's right, not cutting corners, not trying to you know, do the process backwards. So make sure you go out there and fix it. Just that's it. I can't say no better than that. Just go fix it. And I promise you, your life will change. Amen. 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 And, and you don't even have to do no, it's not a Ponzi scheme. It's just paying what you owe. Amen. So, amen. We're going to go ahead and go into our first, um, it's going to be the icebreaker question. All right. And the icebreaker question is this. If you had to cook one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Anything seafood. Anything All seafood. seafood. Yeah, I'm I'm a seafood fanatic. I literally just ate some salmon just a second ago. Um, so yeah, I had salmon and spinach and um, uh, some black beans. And so yeah, so anything seafood. Um, that that's me all day. I I I should live near the water. Can you fish though? No, I cannot say that I'm the best fisher. And <laughs> so my dad, my dad likes to go fishing. And so um, when he retired and I was on the road a whole bunch, but when I would come back home from the road, we would go fishing. 
And uh, and literally, it just got to a point to where I was just like, well, I'm just going because I know you enjoy going. Because <laughs> it was not like I could catch much of anything. But, uh, amen. but amen. Amen. But amen. I definitely would enjoy going. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a pro when it comes to the fishing. So I want I want to just kind of have introduce you, uh, I guess you could say reintroduce you to some and introduce you to some others. Um where is your hometown? Where do you reside now? So my hometown is LA, which is Lower Anderson. That's that's not Los Angeles. That's Lower Anderson, South Carolina. That's where I'm originally from, Anderson, South Carolina. But I currently live in Irmo, South Carolina, which is like a little small city outside of Columbia. Um, so most people don't know Irmo. Most people will know Columbia, South Carolina. That's where I reside currently. And when you first came up in church, what was your very first ministry? Always the choir. Oh, yeah. Always the choir. I, I, Good man. I, so I, I grew up in the Baptist church and in the Baptist church, you had two jobs as a kid that you could do. You could be an usher, you could sing on the choir. Before I knew I had any kind of musical ability, I knew I was not trying to stand up all church service. So I said, the choir for me, please. It's the choir for me. Ah, choir. You preach it. You <laughs> preach it because that was my choice because I came up in the Baptist church and I said, I'd rather sit down in them robes in the back right behind the pastor than to stand by the door and have right. people ignore me and strong arm me to get to a seat that I did not show them to. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So fast forwarding, when did you know that singing was what you wanted to pursue? So um, for me, it happened probably in my high school years. Um, in my high school years, I, I just... I really fell in love with music um, and really became passionate about music. And I knew I was going to go to college um, to pursue a music degree, um, vocal performance, um, with, uh, which I, I never got. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, and so it was it was around about those high school years that I really began to kind of see, you know, that's kind of the way that my life is going. That's kind of the course that my life has taken. Um, and, you know, I, I even before worship leaders and being a worship leader in church really got big. Um, I sensed God calling me to that life, um, but didn't necessarily know how to navigate it. Didn't know how I was going to get to where I needed to get to, but I knew that that was kind of what he was um, positioning me for. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was around about those last years of high school. Now I forewent my, my, my senior year. So I actually graduated as a junior from college. I mean, from high school. Um, wow. So, Probably my sophomore year is when it kind of really started to kind of really started to rain in. Like, you know, you love music more than you love anything else. Um, and that's kind of when my life began to kind of take that that turn and that uh, go back course. OK, so I would ask you this now that you're in South Carolina mm -hmm. and you want to get in the industry. What was the very first thing you thought I need to do this to, for people to see me? Honestly. There was never a thought like, like there was never the very first thought like I need to do this in order to be seen. Um, so I, I was already singing on choirs. I was already, you know, uh, you know, one of the lead singers at my home church. And so we were we were always in churches and doing stuff. Um, so I had, for lack of a better word, some bit of, you know, some uh, some sense of acclaim that uh, when it came down to that, um, people knew me from singing solos with my church. Um, and so, you know, I would get invitations to come and do stuff and do things musically. So there was never this thought of, OK, I need to do this to get out there. Like I kind of already was doing things. Um, and so even before I had ever recorded a record or recorded an album, um, I, people knew my name, if, if for lack of a better word. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I learned and that 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 I do now was all after the fact it was it wasn't prior to it was all after the fact so in in essence it organically happened it was all organic as to how it all kind of built and i, I think that's one thing that a lot of upcoming artists got to hear is that he started off in church you know and he was able to network because one church is going to always invite invite you no matter yeah. If it's, it's an anniversary, somebody's going to invite you to something once they find out that you could sing. Absolutely. And 
now you were able to go to different churches. Now pe- your name was getting out there. Now people know, oh, if you want somebody to sing at your anniversary or you want to sing at the revival, you know, we should call Sean, right? Absolutely. So one thing I, I would ask is when did you start seeing it take um, take flight? So it really began to take flight probably. Um, so I was in college. Um, once I got to college, I um, I started a group and um, I really kind of noticed that things began to really kind of take flight for me. Once uh, I started the group, we began to travel a good little bit. Now I'm working a nine to five. Um, I was working a nine to five at, uh, at AT&T at, during this time and uh, I'm traveling. And so, you know, traveling up and down the road from Anderson to Columbia, Anderson to Charlotte, Anderson to Atlanta, those type of things and making sure that I'm back in place because I got to be. So if I did a Friday night concert somewhere, I'm back home, go to sleep in my bed for maybe two, three hours because I got to work all day on Saturday. I was working in retail. Um, and so, um, you know, that that was kind of the, the, the impetus. That's when I really kind of noticed, OK. This is this is really kind of happening. Um, but even still, I was seeing other people around me. Um, and that's uh, one of the mantras that I live by is life moves by the spe- at the speed of relationship. So my best friend, whose name is Alpheus Anderson, he was doing things musically. Um, my minister of music, Brandon Groves, he was doing things musically. So we, we were all inundated and doing stuff with music. And whether it was in the industry or not, we were all doing things musically. And so it was just, it was like whoever gets some modicum of success first is whoever gets out there first. That's, we were all pushing each other. We were all a part of each other's success. That's dope. I just want you to know that what you just said is dope because it's it's rare now to, to see p- brothers and people that's trying to get to the same goal push each other. It's, it's more Absolutely. of a competition now. Absolutely. And I think that's the, the sad thing because you could take your network and your skills that you know, and, and, and if you come together, you could be able to put everybody win, you know? One of my one of my good friends, his name is Eric Bryce. Um, I, I call him a friend, but he's a legend. Um, and uh, so he, he, he started out when he was 19 years old, going full-time in music, traveling with the Clark mm-hmm. sisters, traveling with commissioned, um, um, Fred and with the Winans and with all of these people, but he was from Detroit. And I'll never forget um, when I started leading worship in Charlotte, North Carolina, we sat and we had uh, breakfast one day and he was telling the story and he said, Sean, he said, man, he said, I envision being able to do what we did in Detroit. He said, in Detroit, if you were good and you, you, and you were doing this thing, everybody in Detroit knew that we had to push whoever was, you know, whoever was doing what they did. That's how they created that Detroit vibe. That's how they created that Detroit sound. And so that's why all of those different, all of those names um, from the Winans, the Clarks, Commission, um, 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 you, you had, uh, uh, let's see here, um, um, Lisa Page Brooks and and you, like all of them, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, the time, like everybody was all interconnected. Their bands played for each other. They, they sang with each other. They were all on the same events and all of this kind of stuff because they understood if you win, then all of us win, and we all keep opening the door for the next one. And and that just really, 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 you know, really helped me to realize that you know we're stronger together. I don't I don't have to hate on you because you're doing something during the time that I'm doing something. No, I want you to do. I want you to succeed. I want you to you to be the best that you can absolutely be. Um, because I understand that if I push you, then you know somebody pushes me. You know, it's it's it, it's it's reciprocity. You said something that was deep. I wanted to kind of touch on is that the city had a machine. Oh, yeah. It wasn't a label. It was the city, and it was the church. It was the churches that knew their singers, and they pushed it as a collective to be able to get them out to the rest of the states for them to be able to be seen. Because now Detroit is known for gospel artists and gospel music. Absolutely. You know. There's the now Dallas, Texas, because of Kurt Franklin and, and all the others, Fred Hammond, all them live in Texas. There's so many Texas artists that are out there and, and pushing. So it's like that machine is able to really get the artists. Cause I believe that a lot of independent artists are are kind of sitting there and saying, Man, I have a great product, but I'm not seen. I, I have I have all the all the qualities I that they say I need, but no one knows me. You know, everybody in town knows me, but then that machine isn't pushing them out. It's just keeping them in. It's like the first effect. Along with that, though, there's there's lack of understanding concerning 
um, how to set yourself up to be successful. So, for example, I've got my, my I've got my iPhone here. This is the iPhone 12, I believe. Um, we we put all of our stock in this one iPhone. So mm-hmm. we put everything into put everything that we can possibly put into this one iPhone and think that because I've got a great phone or I got a great product that this is going to be the thing that causes me to be successful. But without realizing that with this iPhone, there came a lot of promotion. There came a lot of marketing. There came a whole bunch of other steps and a whole bunch of other things. Again, this is the iPhone 12 which means that there have been at least 11, at least 11 other iPhones. That's not including the ones that kind of came in between and all of that kind of stuff. So the Apple saw the long game um, and, and that's what caused this, you know, what caused this groundswell because now we know, see, I was working at at and when the first iPhone came out and mm. not a lot of people knew about the iPhone. Um, you, you know, I mean, those who were Apple fans and Apple product people, they were the ones that were kind of getting it. Everybody else was like, yeah, I don't need all of that in my phone. Now, all you hear about is iPhone or an Android. Those are the only two phones that people actually talk about now. Um, but but it, that's just kind of how things changed and progressed over the course of time. And so you got to really see the long game and not just, well, I got this good product and da, 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 da. It may not hit on your first project. Mm. It, 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 it may not hit anybody who does anybody who does business understands that your first year you take a loss in business because you have to do so much to just even try to break even or try to get your head above water. Right. So if they teach you that in business. Why? How dare we not think that when it comes down to dropping a record or a CD or whatever or consumerism on that end on the musical end of the spectrum, that it's not going to be the same, and especially with how the market changes all the time there's so much uh the market constantly in flux and and i and and you took the words out of my mouth how the market changed because i remember when iphone came out from uh the ipod to now having an iphone and those Mm -hmm. were the days of blackberry yep that's the the days of next tail those are the sidekicks you know those things all all that was killing the game and Apple came out and it really wasn't as big as how it's dominating the game now. And I think you said a perfect thing is they market and they kept marketing. They, even if they didn't get the number, the what was it, the iPod 3? I think it was right. the iPod 3. And then it gave them the 4 and the 5. And But they kept up, I guess you could say they kept up upping their marketing. You know what? Upgrading. But uh, let's even go a step further. So, okay, so we talked about you know, we talk about Apple coming into the scene and coming on to, uh, you know, coming into play. You you think about the fact that when when iTunes start putting out music, so when everybody start kind of putting their music, well, before everybody start putting their music towards iTunes, um, at some point, Apple said, hmm, a song should only be ten dollars. I mean, a, a record should only be nine ninety nine. Now, when you were going to the store to buy CDs, they were fifteen ninety nine, mm-hmm. nineteen ninety. And that was just for a regular 10 song CD. It wasn't like it was a double disc, anything like that. That's what we were paying for CDs out of the store. iTunes comes along and says, eh, let's charge them $10. And now then the whole paradigm shifted. So, mm-hmm. so artists and writers and everybody who's involved in the, in, as far as the music industry is concerned, had to say, oh, we're taking a $10 loss on this product now that I used to sell for 20, that I used to sell for $16. Now every, now iTunes has come along and said, come get this iPhone. You can buy your music straight from us. And oh, by the way, we're only going to sell it to you for $10. Changed, mm. It changed the game. And so, so now as independent artists, here we are, uh, it's 2021, and we're faced with a whole nother dilemma. Now you're not even selling records. Now you're trying to get people to, to spend your stuff on a playlist. Right. Now you're trying to get you're trying to get people to to download your stuff or to 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 go to YouTube and and just spend it all day long. You're not even getting the buys from it. Consumerism has just changed the game. The 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 the, the way we consume music, the way we consume, um, you know, the things that we like to consume has completely changed. And I think that's deep because if you look at it, um, let's say a Spotify spin, I think it's zero point zero one. Actually, so um, so it actually, if you go to Spotify, what is it? Spotify cares something is is something. Spotify released something uh, last week or week before last, 
where essentially they explain how they do their payout. Mm -hmm. Their payout is based on a share system. So what it is, is on out of all of their subscribers that come in, um, all of their subscribers for the month, you know, once they build you for the nine ninety nine or whatever it is, whatever Spotify is monthly, um, they take that and they split it amongst all of the people that are, you know, all of their spins, all of their streams and all of that kind of stuff. So they really can't denote a single percentage of, I mean, they really can't denote a single actual like monetary amount is based on how many subscribers they have that month is based on um, mm. what their spins and streams and all of that kind of stuff looks like through that month. And so you really can't, it's, it's all percentage based. So that that's even more mind boggling that you can't even nail it down to a certain dollar amount because it's not a, they're not able to nail it down to a certain dollar amount. So as an independent artist, what what would you say that they should promote to as a platform so that they at least could get some type of revenue back from their music? So unfortunately, what I would suggest to independent artists is you need to you have to go to all of them because that's where people are. That's where your consumers are. But what you got to realize is the music may not be the piece that's making you the money. Mm. And so you got to think outside of that. You got to think, OK, I got a great song or I got a good single that I'm pushing or I got a good record that I'm pushing. But I need to also have merch. I need to also be traveling. I need to also you know, I need to put myself in other marketplaces um, in order for me to be able to recoup the money that I need to recoup, um, because, again, it's not you can't just do the music. Even if you look at your A-list artists, most of your A-list artists now have multiple streams. Why is that? Because the game changed. Right. And the game changed. They said, okay, so I, I'm not just getting all my money from selling these CDs. I need something else. I need some clothing wear. I need some eyeglass wear. I need, you know, all of these different little things that they're all promoting so that you have multiple streams. The independent artist has to think outside of just a CD, outside of just a record. What else can I package with this that's going to reinforce what I'm doing, but also keep finances and things going as well? Mm. That, that was that was deep on so many levels because I, I see so many people. Uh, let's talk about the production side because you you know so much about the production side from the beginning of writing all the way down to the finished product. So in the production side, when someone is making a, uh, let's say a project, they're making a single mm -hmm. and they wrote the single. Now they're recording a the single. They put a budget for that. Where I see most independent artists fail in is they don't know what to do next after recording it. They spend a lot of money in the production. They spend a, a whole bunch of uh, money in the production. And then when it comes to the next part, mm they miss out, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing that most people know the basics of making sure that it's copywritten, you know, BMI, that it has the, you know, sound, sound scan and, and all the different, the different things that you should have, or the, the, what is it? Nelson encoder. You should have all those encoders stuff. And the BDS encoders and all, yeah, all of that. So the issue is um, Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. Um, mm. What ends up happening is we know so much about how to do very little of what we do that we have not taken into account, the again, the long game. I heard Vashon Mitchell say this. He says, when I think about a record, I start at the end and work my way backwards. He said, mm. I start at the, the product getting to the consumer's hand. OK, now, what was the step before that? Now, what was the step before that? And he works backwards. And that's how you can calculate your budget. That's how you calculate, okay, what I need to do, what steps I need to take, who I need to be talking to, all of those various aspects of, of how this thing works. Um, we only take into account getting the song out and we think we've done something. Like I, if, if I see another independent artist do a single release concert, I'm going to lose my mind. Why are you doing a single release concert? Why are you paying to do a concert for one song's release. What sense does that make? When supposedly the single should be pushing everybody towards your record. Now, if you're not gonna record a whole record, then why even do a, an entire concert based on this one single? You need to do what you need to do to work that single. 
Mm. And working that single does not mean sinking all of your money into a concert because we'll we'll do this. We'll we'll have we'll fly in three or four different people to come and sing on the single release concert, and everybody falls in love with those three or four people that you done brought in, and nobody buys your single. <laughs> oh Jesus. It was like what was what was the point of that? What was what why did you do that? What what you do that for? Yeah, so we, I think we we think about we we I'm not saying don't celebrate the wins. Putting out a single is a great win to celebrate, but that's not the end all be all. That they, so you, you want the single in the hands of people. I, I have to ask this now. So, how do you market it? What, if you're just doing a single, let's just do that scenario. Let's just say we had a single instead of doing a listening party or a, a, a single concert. So, how would you market? that um as 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 a whole i'll tell you what i did with my last single um and 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 this ain't boasting or bragging but my last single um on the on billboard charts it hit number six on the hot singles charts um on for that week that it the week that it dropped now we didn't sustain it but it hit number six for the week that we dropped it um and so what we did was i actually gave my single away to over 200 some odd worship leaders across the country. And I said, hey, my single's dropping on Easter weekend. I'm giving you the single, I'm giving you the track, and I'm giving you the lyric sheet. Teach it to your choir, teach it to your praise team. Y'all do it with me on Sunday morning and let's see what happens. Mm. Gave it away to 200 some odd people and I reached number six on Billboard Hot Single Chart. You have to have some sort of plan because he, here's the thing that I know. I know that I, you know, I had just, re, I had just accepted my new position at my church and big shout out to Right Direction Church International right here in Columbia, South Carolina, where my pastors, Bishop Herbert and Dr. Marcia Bailey, love them dearly. Um, and so, uh, I, as a matter of fact, I see my assistant who's on the line, Michelle Jackson. God bless you. And my sister, Candace Stokes. God bless you. Um, but anyway, um, and so what ended up happening was I had just accepted my position and I knew I didn't have days off to go and work a record um, because, I mean, essentially, that's what you got to do. You got to work the record. You got to take promo dates and all of that kind of stuff. And I said, OK, well, what's my workaround for this? How do how do I get around that? And that was it. Put it in the hands of people that can do what I can't do mm. Put it in the hands of people who will be my voice when I can't be there to be my voice. Mm. That's how you do it. So you got to find ways. I'm telling you, it's it, for me, this is just me. For, for me, the next time that I do another song, I'll probably end up giving it away. Just because I see that there's not there's not a lot of making money in the music aspect of it. And I love the music aspect of it, but there's not a lot of making money per se. Um, and so what, what you do is you use that as bait. You use that as something to hook them for something else. Hmm. It really just kind of depends on, you know, it depends on the kind of budget that you have. If you've got a nice enough budget to uh, to really work the record and to, you know, to go and be traveling and stuff, you know, you got to take promo dates. Well, OK, so what about you in a season like the pandemic? If you dropped a single last year. You know, what do you do? How, how do you get that song out? You you could you could go and record a video. You could go and, um, you know, do a, a house worship thing or whatever the case may be. Um, but you have to just find ways um, that will be a great strategy. And it depends on where your followers, where your community is. I know that people who typically bring me to their church or people that, you know, places that I typically go, they know me as a worship leader. And so if that's the case, that's where my market is, that's where my fan base is, um, then if I get my music and stuff into the hands of the people that lead them in worship, then it's almost like I was there. That's good stuff. Chris, you got some? I'm just taking in all the wisdom because I'm definitely going to use that, <laughs> even though my single's been out for like two years. <laughs> so I'm definitely using that. But um, especially the part about um, if you have a single, it's supposed to be pushing them to the album. So thank you. Cause that's Absolutely. what I'm actually working towards finishing and completing and pushing out there, but definitely um, listening and getting some great knowledge. Cause yeah, the album's going to drop and I need to be able to market it and push it out there. And do the, like the, the industry will probably try to tell you, well, your singles old It's it's two years old, but does everybody have it? Facts. I've, never, right. I've never heard your single before. So that means right. that I can be a new consumer here with a two year old single. 
Right. You know, so and, until until you've completely saturated the market with your music, um, and, and that's one of the that's one of the pros, but also one of the cons of gospel music because we only have three percent of the market share. Um, you know, a lot of times our music has a longer shelf life. I mean, I can turn on the radio today, and at some if I listen to the radio all day long, guaranteed I'm gonna probably hear "Order My Steps" at some time during the day. Cool. Yeah. That's true. And it's a it's an old, I mean, that's on 20 years old, 20 plus years mm -hmm. old. Guaranteed, I'm gonna hear something that was that came out before I mean, you know, 20, 25 years ago. And that's because of the shelf life of gospel music. And to add on to it from the radio um aspect, and I was um in a room with a lot of radio announcers that were talking about this. That's the market that listens to radio. Right. But with now that um it's a digital platform. You know, a lot of people don't know that the, the old way of radio is changing. We're, we're changing into a digital aspect where cars will not um, have antennas in two years. So what are they going to have? They're going to have apps. They're going to have, you know, that's why you have Apple CarPlay, Android CarPlay, and a lot of app, a lot of people are trying to get their apps on to cars so that you're automatically there, right? So the main thing that people have to realize is know your market. Your market might not listen to the radio. So it goes back to what Sean was saying earlier about playlists. A lot of kids, 18 to between 18 to 20, listen to playlists. They mm -hmm. they that's all they do. They'll put the Sunday worship playlist on. And if you own that playlist and they like it, they're gonna spend you. I I I know it by because it worked for me. Because so, <laughs> they they so they don't buy that? it. With that, as an artist, if you've got a discography to you, then curate your own playlist on Apple Music. Curate your own playlist on Spotify and say, hey, y'all come check me out on my playlist. I've got a playlist, all of my songs. I've been actually, you know, kind of looking into that and doing some research into that. Like, wait a minute, now I'm featured on quite a few little records and I got some records of my own. Maybe I just need to create me a playlist. A good friend of mine called me and said, "Sean, you need to go ahead and create you a playlist. Why don't you have your own playlist?" So I'm doing I'm doing the same thing with stuff that I've written on or songs that I've written. Um, I'm creating a playlist on on SoundCloud to where if somebody wants a song, boom, I can go ahead and send them the playlist and say, "Hey, take a listen. Some of those uh, these are some of the songs that I've already written. Are you interested in some of, one of those? Um, or you know, this is kind of the vibe. This is kind of the vein that I kind of write in. But just thinking about those types of things and think about how to." Uh, to send people, um, send your fan base, send the people that support you to things that you're doing. Right. That's a good, that's good, that's good right there. I like that. Because a lot of times you could go into the empty pit of spending money on stuff that don't give you the the product exactly. that you really wanted. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Man, okay. We, we that was good. I, and then you start talking about writing, which we're going to come back to. So everybody, we're going to go ahead and go. If you haven't done it yet, we're going to go into a music, a quick music break. We're going to play Sean's music. So it's going to be his own personal playlist first here at Anointed Radio. <laughs> um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and play his music. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe um, to all of our channels. Follow us at LV Anointed Radio on all social media platforms. LV like Las Vegas. And um, the other thing I would say is tag your friend, tag an independent artist that you know that need this, this knowledge, because this is some real deep stuff we're giving out tonight. And they need to hear it, because the only way you could do better is even if you know what you're doing. And that's the only way you're going to be able to do better is if you have to get the knowledge. So with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to play Your Way is Better. So we'll see y'all in a minute. Having to learn A delay is not a denial When things don't seem to go my way All the while Not focusing on your promise but learning to consider 
all my ways. But you taught me there's a purpose for my pain, and these trials won't last forever. There's sunshine after rain, and I'm able to make it through. For you know, you know what's best for me. Oh God, you know what's best for me. When my eyes they cannot see, can't see the plans you have for me. But on this, I'm gonna agree. I will agree. So, Father, I lift my hands and I say that your way is better. Your way is better. Oh, 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 oh. So much better. Oh, your way is better. Your way is better. And I will trust you. And I will trust you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. What's best for me? With my eyes, they cannot see. Can't see the plans the you have for me. But on this, I will agree. Oh, 
wanna live to see your face Wake up every day and know that you are so in love with me I wanna tell the whole wide world Every man, woman, boy and girl You mean everything And I'll never go a day without you Oh no Oh I wanna be around in your grace. I wanna live to see your face. Wake up every day and know you that you are so, so alive with me. I wanna tell, I wanna tell the whole wide world. Every man, every woman, woman, boy, and girl. You mean everything. Hey, and I'm never going away without him. I'm never going Never go a day without him. He is mine. I am here. Say with me, I'm never going. Yeah, I'm never going. I'm never going. He's mine. I'm here. Everybody say. I'm never going. Agree with me, I'll never go. Everyone say your grace and mercy has captured my heart. Oh, oh, your grace. Till you're all they see. Till you're all they see. Till you're all they see. 
I praise you forever. Forever. Mm. We are back. That's my jam. Make sure you go and download all his music, especially this one. This I'm gonna have to learn this for 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 sun uh, for a Sunday. On yes, praise and worship, man. Crazy about my church out here just sung it maybe like a couple weeks ago. Oh wow! I did not even know that we sung it uh, from Jonathan Nelson, Jason Nelson, Jason huh? Nelson version. Yeah, but we just sung it not too long ago. Wow! Wow! Now, now that's speaking it. of that, now let's go on how you write music because a lot of music people don't know that you wrote for that person. So let's go talk about that. Yeah. So, um, so of course that song is actually on Jason Nelson's uh, last record, The Answer. Um, and, um, and it's so funny. So Bishop Nelson and I have been friends for years and, um, and one Sunday they did never go a day. And, um, um, he called me that Sunday. He said, yeah, never go a day. Dump my church this morning. I'm recording it. I was like, oh, okay. I have no problem with that whatsoever. <laughs> and so uh, he, he did it and uh, I'm, I'm very appreciative of it. And we praise God for RCA and those nice quarterly checks. Come on, somebody. Ah. Got some praise. Um, um, but so yeah, that one was on that record. Um, did a song called uh, Blown Away, which uh, Pastor Hart Ramsey recorded on his last record called True Story. Um, um, let me see here. Uh, just just did a song with uh, Bishop Marvin Sapp. Well, I didn't do the song with him, but Bishop Marvin Sapp recorded a song called Great and Mighty. It's on his last record. Um, and so God is blessed, man. And I mean, I, I've got others and, and God is just blessed. And he's been so faithful um, when it comes down to songwriting and, and things of that nature. And that's, uh, uh, I love songwriting. I love writing songs. I just, you know, I just really enjoy um, that aspect of it. Um, it allows me to, to work without working, if you will. Amen. Um, I may not be able to sing the song at your church, but I can I can get it in the hands of somebody who can whose whose platform is much larger than mine. And I think that is amazing because it goes back to what you were talking about earlier of having different streams. Yep. Because sometimes, you know, you as a songwriter, you might write a song like, I love this song, but I don't want to sing this. I hear this person or I would love to give this person this song and just to the people that you just named already is it's it's just a, a great honor that you they are using your work absolutely that is amazing you know and and it's successful a lot of people only see one aspect being out front but there's a lot of in the background singing in the background Listen, when when you really look at and I mean let's take the monetary aspect of it out uh, my goal, you know, I try to write songs that are to that are easily to be used in church for worship um, and for praise. And so, um, again, I know that I can't travel like I want to, and and it would take a whole bunch to you know to 
to try to record all of these songs and try to work all of them. But if I can get them on records where people can hear them, um, then I'm, I've created another tool for someone to be able to use for their worship service. And so um, I, I, I'm, I'm so thankful for that, that, that God is, that God gives me songs and things that will help facilitate worship for others. Amen. And you can feel it. You know, that's one thing I can say is you could feel the worship. You could feel like I could picture myself in church and listening to that song. You you know, um, I feel like when you were writing it, you definitely set the tone. You definitely set the tone oh, of that song to, for someone to just give reverence to God and just to worship and be in that, that form of worship at that time. It's not wordy. It's not too much. You know, because some people you have to look up the lyrics and oh geez, I can catch on. Or they gotta have the lyrics in the back of the church where they got the screens right, and sing right. them. But you could catch on to it and just have a unison praise. I, I'm I bet you it's amazing if you just hear a whole church singing that song. It, I've had some phenomenal moments with that particular song with Never Go a Day. Um that just that, and every time it just blows me away. I mean, I'm really really just enamored and just like just like wow. Um, when when you no longer have to lead the moment and the audience and the church is singing it um, and they just take the song from you, um, it's, it's, it's one of the greatest feelings ever. You know, it's one of the greatest feelings to be able to sit down and the whole church is singing. Um, or when people send me videos and they're like, hey, we did Never Go A Day Sunday, check this out. I mean, it just blows me away um, that, that God would use me in that space to be able to pin something that would give him glory and that other people can use to, to do the same. So, Amen. So speaking of writing, um, I, I know that you're writing a book. Tell, yes. tell us a little bit about that. So, um, so I've been in music ministry full time now for 10 years. Um, I celebrated my 10th, 10th year anniversary of being full time in music ministry, stepped off of AT&T, stepped into full time music ministry back in 2010. Um, uh, well, about the end of 2010, 2020, uh, 2011. And so, um, yeah, and so I've been doing just this for 10 years now. And um, when this pandemic hit, um, God really challenged me to pick up some of the things that he had told me through the years. Um, and so I've been teaching clinics and workshops on leading worship and on worship and all of that kind of stuff, really helping other um, other, you know, praise teams and things of that nature uh, for some years. And he said, you know, you have a book there. And that's that's what I've been doing, just putting it all, piecing it all together um, and pulling all those pieces together. And so this will be a niche book, but uh, it'll be a book for worship facilitators, choir members and um, um, people who lead worship, ministers of music and, um, um, you know, anybody who, who, who has anything to do with facilitating worship for other people um, will be able to grab this book and glean, I pray, some nuggets that will help them in their journey. Um, there are books on worship that are out in the marketplace, um, but they're not too many books from our perspective, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to insert our voice into that place. I wanted to insert our thoughts. And, and so this will be my perspective. My, this will be my, um, the thoughts, my thoughts from what I've experienced in primarily the urban black church and the urban black church experience. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's what this book is about. And I'm excited about it. I'm really looking forward to it, and so hopefully, um, the the prayer uh, the prayer is second by the end of second quarter, beginning of third quarter, this book will be out and available. We're putting the finishing touches on it. I've got meetings, as a matter of fact, next week as, as we're looking through the manuscript and looking at the revisions. And so, yeah, that's that's where we are. Amen. So that that's going to be dope. Definitely uh, keep us posted. We'll definitely post it once it comes Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's going on, Jacory? So yeah, Jacory's in the room. He Jacory's said, room. he said, we love you, man. <laughs> and again, I definitely want to shout out Michelle Jackson McDowell, who that is my left brain, like for real, for real. When I got to my church, um, one of the questions that they asked me was, you know, how, how are you administratively? And I was like, yeah, no, uh, that, that is a no for me. Um, and so they, you know, they said, well, we got an administrator. Who, who will help you. And she literally keeps my life together. And so she is family to me. And I just appreciate her being on here with us on tonight. So God bless your heart, Michelle. God bless your heart. There goes Michelle right there. Say hello to the family. You have a great guest tonight. Amen. It's good to be able to have a team and a circle around you that pushes you. And one Absolutely. thing that I want to ask you on that is how detriment as a uh, 
uh, early independent artist to be able to build a team that helps you be successful? It's so important to have a team um, because again, we don't, we don't know it all. We, we, we haven't learned it all. We have not, um, we haven't grasped everything that there is to grasp about this industry. And again, with the industry changing, you sometimes you need people who will keep you in line. Sometimes you need people who, who know different areas than you do so that you don't have to try to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. You need people that will allow you the freedom to concentrate on what you're good at. Um, there's a section I actually write about in my book. Um, but it talks about how, you know, you have to you have to be able to shore up your weaknesses. So you have to assess within yourself. You got to know, OK, I know the kind of leader that I am or I know the kind of business person that I am, whatever the case may be. And so I know these are my strengths, but I also know these are my weaknesses. And with those weak areas, I have to if I'm not the one doing those, then I need to put people in that place to be able to do those so that we have a strong organism all the way, organism all the way around. Um, and anything that you, you know, any any area of detriment that you have in your ministry, in your artistry, whatever, um, you'll go lacking in that area. And that could be it, it could cause a demise um, in your, you know, in how you and how successful you actually become and how high you actually go. Wow. You got to have a good team. You have to have some people. You have to have people that will challenge you. You have to have people who who don't think like you think and who have different different perspectives from what your perspective is. Um, this, this past administration, um, one of his, you know, this past presidential administration, he, he said in the beginning, you know, I'm going to have all the smartest people. I'll have all the smartest people around me. And, 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 you know, and they'll, they'll all be able to, they'll all have my ear and da, 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 and all of this kind of stuff. Well, we found out at the end of the day that they were yes people. Um, and that they they may they may have been the smartest people, but their voices definitely were not heard. Um, and so and that caused so many various things to end up happening. And so as a leader, as a, as as the owner of because if you're an artist and you're essentially the owner of that particular brand as the as the brand owner, um, it's my job to make sure that I'm putting people around me who have my best interest in mind, but who also understand the areas of marketing and the areas that I don't get and the areas that I don't, I may not necessarily be the most educated in so that I can make wise decisions and smart moves. Amen. Somebody, I hope somebody out there heard that because that was the gym that was going to get you out of the ruck that you in right now to get you to that next level. So well, um, here, it was for me. <laughs> Chris already received. He said, "I received all." Oh that. my, my, my! Receive it, Chris. Receive it. <laughs> so I, I, I want to ask. So when are we gonna get another song? When is, is it coming soon? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't itch to put out music mm. right now. I'm, I, I have no itch whatsoever. Now I did think about, and and and, and y'all may be some of the first ones to hear it. Um, but I did think about putting out, giving away a song for free with the book. Um, I thought about, you know, because of how I'm doing the book and what the book is for, I thought about doing a song, you know, a great worship song or something that'll go along with the book. It's a thought I hadn't, I hadn't, my, my brain ain't set on it yet. Again, I'm enjoying the space that I'm in. Um, I'm enjoying, I'm really enjoying the space that I'm in and just, you know, the things that I focus on. I'm married, just celebrated my third year anniversary. Um, Happy you know, anniversary. Thank you so very much. I celebrated that on yesterday. And um, and so this year we're wanting to start our family. And, you know, so I'm, there are so many other things that, you know, that just kind of take my mind, of course, with, you know, with ministry and with the ministry that we, where I serve is, is, is very busy and just really wanting to make sure that as we're, you know, getting ready to open back up at some point during this year, you know, that we're doing all of those types of things. And so I've got a lot of different hats. I've got a lot of different irons in the fire, not to mention um, via my website, I cultivate worship leaders and stuff from across the country. Um, well, actually, literally across the world, I have people from London and from other places that are, you know, part of my worship community. And so the, I'm, I'm evolving as not just an artist, but I'm evolving as a, a believer and as a man. And as I'm now an old head, you know, I get people who come up to me like, Uncle, I've been watching you for the past 20 years. And I'm like, for real? Like, 
Like for real, for real. And yeah, I'm 40 years old. I've been doing this now for a long time. And, you know, people are coming up, you know, and who who, who have been watching. And so I want to make sure that I'm leaving my mark in the best way possible for the next generation. So if that's music, then cool. I've, I listen to the Lord on that. If, if that's this book, then, you know, that's what I believe. That's, you know, one of the aspects of the book. But that's also mentoring and having my hands on various people, not to mention still writing songs for, for other artists to do so. To answer your question, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I have no clue. Maybe one day. Well, maybe one day. Y'all pray my strength. Amen. Well, one thing I want to just put out there is that um, it's amazing that you learned your balance. And I think a lot of people are starting to get to grips with having that balance because being before COVID, everybody was on the hustle and bustle. Everybody was on the go, 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 go. And a lot of people are starting to realize, especially because people are still leaving out of here left and right. You know, my I, I could tell you on our prayer call at Christ the King Christian Fellowship, shout outs to them. Um, we hear about someone passing away, someone lost someone almost every day. Wow. So just having that balance of enjoying life, you know, don't just live life, actually enjoy each day. I think that's a big thing that you just said without saying, um, because it, it's it's a big key to keep you sane. You, you know, my pastor, he he says this, and 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 ever since he said it, I have adapted it, and I have just kind of taken that to be um, the way that we got to live life. He says, you know, sometimes when you're in ministry and when you serve in ministry and when you're called and all of this kind of stuff, it's not balance. Um, balance implies that all things are weighted equally. And so there's a balance to it. He says, but what we actually have to do is blend. He says, you know, mm -hmm. we, we're, we're doing, we're blending um, because I know that there are certain seasons, there are certain weeks when I know that there are certain things that I've got to do, um, which means that, you know, and I have to, so let's say, for example, family, we're talking about my family. Um, there are certain weeks when I know I'm going to be a little bit busier in ministry. I'm, you know, I, I may have to travel. I may have to be at the church a little bit more, whatever the case may be. And so I have those conversations with my wife like, hey, I might be out of pocket a little bit more um, this week than, than I would be on a, on a regular week. And so it's not that I'm balancing it. She understands that this is what she married. You know, she married a person who was full time in, min in ministry. You know, again, we've been married three years. Seven of those years, I was already doing full time ministry. I was already traveling. I was already on tours. I was already on planes all the time and all this kind of stuff. And so she understands that. And so sometimes there are busier seasons than others. And you got to blend it all together. You got to make the whole thing. Thing work. So it may not be that it's balanced. I think oftentimes we, we we take that balance thing and we just like, you know, I need to take a sabbatical from church because my life is unbalanced. No, it, it, God knew the kind of family that you were going to be put into. He knew the kind of ministry he was going to send to you, uh, send you to. And so it's a blending. You got to make all, you got to put all of that together and, uh, and blend it all together and make it work. I'm using that. I just want you to know. <laughs> I, I give my pastor props on that one. That, that, that ain't mine. That's not an original talk. Oh, I know. <laughs> Tell your pastor that Pastor Jay here in Las Vegas is going to use that. <laughs> so um, one thing I, I wanted to lastly say is this. What would, you, what would your last, um, in this last question, what would you say as wisdom to the upcoming artists? Sure. Um, the first thing that I would say to the upcoming artists um, is if you're going to do gospel music, if you're going to do Christian music, if you're going to do music that talks about our God and it talks about our Christ and our Savior, um, make sure that your life matches up to it. Uh. Uh, the the one aspect, the one thing that I just that 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 bothers me so much um, that I see so often is. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm not even just talking about younger generations. I'm talking about older generations, my generation and younger generations is when the life doesn't match what's being sung about. Uh, the Bible says this. The Bible says uh, that let the wheat and the tear grow together and God, uh, God will do the separating. And so I was in San Antonio, Texas one day. I'll never forget it. It was after a concert and a gentleman walked up to me and he said, man, you guys were awesome tonight. He said, man, I know being out on this road, I know you see some of the craziest stuff. I know you see all kinds of stuff going on or whatever. And the Holy Spirit prompted me and he said, uh, the Holy Spirit prompted me to say, um, 
you know, the, let the wheat and the tear grow together. He gave me that scripture. And I told him, I said, man, at the end of the day, you know, I do know all of that stuff goes on. But at the end of the day, it's only my responsibility to be wheat. That's that's all I can do. That's all I can be is wheat. I got to be wheat. And so to any upcoming artist who's out there and you're, if you're singing about Jesus, be wheat. You know, let, let your life, let your life be the same thing that what you're singing about. I wrote a song in, in the song, You Saved Me. I said, may my life be a sample of your love and grace towards me. May my lips forever give your name to praise. All I am and forever will be is just one rescued by thee to tell the world you saved my life from sin, to tell the world you saved my life again. And so what I meant by that was, God, I want to, I'm a walking advertisement. Bible says living epistles to be read of men. I am that. that that's what I am. That's my purpose. That's my job. Um, no matter what I do and, and where I'm doing it at, I'm supposed to not only represent God, but represent God. I'm mm. representing him, but I represent him to everybody who meets me. And so that's that's my word for, for everyone who, you know, for anybody who's an artist, man, let your life match up. Let it match up. Amen. Um, may, hey, man. Hope y'all was listening. Where can everybody find you? Where's your website? What's your social media? So check me out. You can, if you are a worship leader, if you are a worship leader or anybody who facilitates worship, connect with me um, with my worship community. And you can do that on seanbigby.com. Go to seanbigby.com. There's a little tab there. If you put your information and stuff in, you'll actually get five habits of effective worship leaders right now for absolutely free. I'm giving it away. Absolutely free. Five habits of effective worship leaders. SeanBigby.com. You go down there to Worship Community United. So you can connect with me there. You can connect with me on all social media except for Twitter because the devil got in Twitter. They hacked my Twitter account and took my name and Twitter won't give me my name back. I don't know what that is. But anyway, but uh, outside of that, um, Facebook. Instagram, Clubhouse, um, all of those wonderful places at Sean Bigby, S H A W E N B I G B Y. Connect with me on all of those places, and I would love to be connected to you. Amen. Um, I want to just say, on behalf of Anointed Radio here in Las Vegas, thank you for coming on because you really gave some gems. You you was teaching some stuff to me. I was like, what? I'm, I'm taking mental notes. I'm about to be on your website. You said, five habits for free? For the F? Uh, Everybody, if you ain't F. heard it, it's for the F, y'all. So go ahead. And um, I just wanted to kind of say this in, in front of everybody, too. I, I met Sean on Clubhouse, and we had a great conversation about introvert and extrovert um, and being in ministry as and being married. And knowing the how to really know your your partner, and it was a deep conversation. And ever since then, I said I gotta have him on the show because he'd be just throwing out gems that I still remember the gems from Clubhouse, and <laughs> that's a whole different subject. So it, it it's it's a it's you're you're really a real genuine dude. I, I really appreciate um, the words that you said that night, and I appreciate you coming on to the show and really just sharing with us. I know a lot of independent artists are really reaping from what you are putting out there, especially about being authentic, being genuine, knowing how to strategize, starting from the uh, back to the front. Man, you was putting out gems, and if they did not hear it in the beginning, guess what? Y'all could all go to the podcast and listen to the replay that's going to be posted on Sunday where we're on everything but title because everybody knows what I say. Jay-Z be hating. Yes. <laughs> Until he put me on title, I will not or get a gag clause. Either one of those. I'm not going to stop saying it until he adds us on title. So yeah. we're on every podcast. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on TuneIn, Radio.com, Pandora, Spotify. We're on all those platforms where you can listen to all the playbacks and be able to stay tuned with all of our great interviews. And this interview will be posted this Sunday, and you can be able to check it out. And um, anytime you have anything, Sean, let me know. I'm posting it. I'm I'll reshare it. And if you want to come do a release, let me know. We'll set up another interview and come before the people on the West Coast so that they can know the great things that you're doing. That sounds like a plan. And the next time I come on here, I need somebody to send me a plate from Pin. Is it Pinwheel? What's my spot down in, in, in Vegas downtown? Uh, is it Pinwheel? I think it's Pinwheel Cafe. Am I right? I like never been to Pinwheel Cafe. It's like it's on the back. It's on the back side of well, I was gonna say it's on the back side of one of them hotels, but that's where every restaurant is on the back side of one of them hotels. 
<laughs> my first time in Vegas, man, it was nothing like I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought all the gambling and stuff happened in one, you know, one location. And, you know, like you went somewhere to mm-hmm. air, the airport had slot machines. I was like, Oh, so y'all tripping all across the Vegas. Y'all just tripping everywhere in Vegas. But amen, praise the Lord. I did eat pretty good, so praise the Lord. And and, and there's even more food places out here. So once you come back in town, I'll show you around. Yeah, listen, the next time I come, I have to have I have to make sure that I don't have food poison. The last time I came was for the Stellars, probably back in 2000 and 2017. And I had food poison on the flight to get there. So I was sick the entire time I was in Vegas and I was literally there only 24 hours. I flew in oh, trash. On the hotel and I was right across the street from the soul food spot. Uh, some soul M&M food. soul food. It may have been M&M. So I don't know what it was to be honest with you. I just kept looking saying, I can't even go. My stomach can't get right. Just couldn't <laughs> get right. Bro. Couldn't get right. <laughs> couldn't get right. We got you next time. Go ahead, Chris. I'll just take him to Grits. That's what I'm going to tell you. Okay. You got any last Cafe. words? Huh? You got any last words? Uh, again, great wisdom. I'm definitely taking heed to all of it, especially with me having my own product and stuff coming out. So I appreciate the wisdom. I did go ahead and while you was talking, I was on your website signing up. And I just got it. I just got the notification. So got <laughs> <Yeah. it. laughs> Once the show's over, minds will go through. So <laughs> um, with that being said, um, I want everybody to make sure you download the Anointed Radio app, 24 Hour Gospel, where you can listen to great artists like Sean Bixby and Chris and me and everybody. There's all kind of music on there, all kind Christian hip hop, Christian reggae. Um, we even got Hillsong because we can't leave them out. We can't. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. We all singing to God. So yeah, it's a collective cool. thing. Yeah, we didn't. I'm going to throw a jab at Stella's. Yeah, they said I'm not a qualified radio station, but we you still. Sure? Gonna, oh, so we're going to still keep oh, on okay. keeping on right. until they get it right and, they, and, and get it because I, I don't get how last year we was put into consideration for the Stella's, but this year we're not. So we're going to pray that. Oh, that's that's crazy. Crazy. A- Amen. That's crazy. Amen. Amen. But Anointed Radio is here and here to stay. So with that being said, make sure you go follow us, download the Anointed Radio app so you get all your 24-hour gospel uninterrupted and you can be able to get your worship in your in your nice smart cars and all those good things. And with that being said, you said the song, so I got to play out to the song. Go ahead and introduce You Save Me. So You Saved Me was my last single. I released it back in 2017, I believe it was, 2017, 2018, somewhere around up in there. I can't even remember anymore. It, it, all these years just kind of run together. I believe it was 2017, um, but I believe it's a song that will bless your entire life. Um, it's a, a great Easter song, but it's a great song that just talks about the redemption and the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. You Save Me. Amen. You saved me, y'all, and we'll see you guys next week. And just know that Jesus can save you. Just one second. Bye, (laughs) y'all. May my life be a simple love and love and grace towards me. May my lips forever give your name the praise. All I am and forever will be is one rescue by thee to tell the world you have saved my life from sin. To tell the world you have saved my life again. May my life save me. Be a simple love, your love and grace for us. May my lips forever give your name the yeah. All I am forever will be is from rescue by the to tell the world you have saved my life and sin. To tell the world to you have saved my life. May my life be a simple love, your 
love and grace was the main I lived forever. All I ever need is one rescue. Tell you did it. You saved my life. I'm gonna tell the world you did. You're all for me. You died just to save me. You gave your all for me. You died just to save me. So I'll tell the nation, show the whole world that you saved me. Let's say it again. You gave your all for me. And I'm grateful for to say So I'll tell the nations Show the whole world that Listen I won't stop loving you Stop worshiping you You saved me Yeah, yeah, yeah I won't stop loving you I won't stop loving you Stop worshiping I won't stop loving you, Jesus. Oh, God. You want my affection, Father. Yes, you have. Uh, so my whole life is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, say you saved me. Saved me from myself. You saved me, Jesus. Yes, you did, Father. Hey, you saved me when I was going the wrong way. When I was running up against the wall, Father. You saved me from it all. Because you healed me. You healed my broken heart, Father. You healed my mind. God, you stepped in on time, and you love me. Stretched out your arms because you love me. Whole planet died because you love me, and I'm still alive because you love me. Now, everybody, if you don't mind, would you open up your mouth and just decree and declare the goodness of the Lord while you're in the land of the living? Anybody grateful to be saved? Open your mouth and say with me, I won't stop loving you. Stop loving you. Stop worshiping. You yeah. I won't stop loving you. Stop loving you. Stop loving you. Yeah, yeah. You so all I am forever will be is one rescue by thee. All I am forever is one with you by the I'll tell the world of how you did it. I'm gonna tell the nation about it, Lord. Yeah. It's one with you by the to tell the world you have saved my life from sin. Tell the world you have saved my life again.